In the last session, we learned that in history we study about early societies, how societies and cultures have evolved over time. But how do we study the past? We use archaeological sources and literary sources. What are these archaeological sources and literary sources? Let's see. The sources of history can be broadly divided into two categories. They are archaeological sources and literary sources. What is this archaeological sources include? It includes monuments, inscriptions, coins and artifacts. And what does literary sources include? It includes religious, secular and foreign accounts. By the way, what do you mean by archaeology? The study of the past by examining the material remains is called as archaeology. The people who study this are called as archaeologists. Archaeological sources include buildings, houses, pottery, seals, coins, monuments, writings and paintings on stones or walls, tools, jewelry, bones, leftovers, pieces of metals and other artifacts. But where can we find all these sources? Occasionally these sources are buried under the ground and can be recovered by digging up the ground. This process of digging is called excavation. These archaeological sources are particularly useful in the study of prehistoric cultures since prehistory is concerned with periods for which there are no written records. The plant and animal remains indicate the climatic conditions and vegetation that existed at that time. The study of the bones of animals excavated help historians to understand the pattern of animal domestication of a particular period. Monuments are old buildings or other old structures which are important for their historic connection or legacy. Monuments include temples, mosques, tombs, churches, cemeteries, forts, palaces, steppes and rocket caves. These monuments show us the knowledge of our ancestors in their architectural innovations. They provide us information about political, social, cultural and religious lives of the people of the times in which they were built. Next, we we'll look into the inscriptions. Inscriptions are writings on seals, temple walls, stones or pillars, wooden tablets, bricks and images. Some of the inscriptions convey royal orders and decisions. This, this is the Ashokan inscription. It throws light on the social, religious and administrative conditions of the time. This is Halmedi inscription. It is the first available inscription in Canada. And what is the study of inscriptions is known as? The study of inscriptions is known as epigraphy. Did our ancestors use money? Yes, they did. Coins from the past shed light on different aspects of life as it existed then. The study of coins is called numismatics. Hordes of coins have been recovered from different parts of the country. The coins discovered were made of various metals like copper, bronze, gold and silver. Some of the earliest coins have symbols punched on them. The later coins depict the images of kings and gods and goddesses. These coins also mention the names of the kings and the date of the reign. Thus, coins help historians to reconstruct the unknown history of several ruling dynasties. Artifacts Artifacts are old pieces of things or belongings of people. They include pottery, jewelry, toys, seals, pieces of cloth and other remains which the people used during the course of their lives. They tell a lot of 
things about social, cultural and economic life of the people. A vast hoard of artifacts including jewelry, seals, pottery, terracotta toys and bronze images was unearthed from the Indus Valley. Hey, I heard something about literary sources at the beginning. What are those? Those are religious, secular and foreign accounts. Religious literature. Most of the ancient manuscripts are religious in nature. Notable among the religious literature are the Vedas, the Ramayana, the Mahabharata, the Bible and the Quran. They throw considerable light on the social and cultural conditions of the period during which these books were written. Besides religious literature, there also exists a vast body of secular literature. These books usually prescribe the duties to be performed by people of different segments of the society. They set out rules and regulations that held the society together. An example of secular literature is Kautilya's Arthashastra and Vishakadatta's Mudra Rakshasa Kalhana's Raja Tarangini. Foreign accounts. Greek, Roman, Chinese and other travelers came to India and they left behind accounts of things that they saw. This is Megasthenes, Huensang and Fahusin. Indica is the book written by Megasthenes. He was an ambassador to the court of Chandragupta Maurya. Fahusin and Huan Sang from China left accounts which described the prevalent social, religious and economic conditions in India during their visit.